The 2023 edition of the GPU Technology Conference was full of interesting announcements with AI taking center stage. Epic showed off its new version of Unreal Engine 5.2 with some incredible looking demos, and real-time path tracing seems to be emerging as the next big thing. Let's take a look at some of the incredible advancements in graphics coming soon. Today's video is sponsored by urcdkeys.com. If you buy a retail Windows 10 key, you could spend $100 or more. But if you buy an OEM key from urcdkeys.com, a Windows 10 Pro key will cost you only $15 when you use the coupon code C25. The keys work globally, and you can even get a free upgrade from Microsoft to Windows 11 if you wish. After you've made your purchase, you will find your key in your purchased orders in the urcdkeys.com website. Click on Get Keys and copy the key. Then in Windows, click on Start and type Activate and then on Activation Settings. Then click Change Product Key, pasting the key you just purchased and click Next. That's it. Your copy of Windows is now activated. If you want Office 2021 Professional, you can use the same C25 discount code and get it for just $60. URCD Keys is also having a spring sale with some cool affordable mechanical keyboards and gaming mice and even chairs. A big thanks to urcdkeys.com for sponsoring today's video. Check the links in the video description to get your cheap OEM Windows keys today. Epic started their GTC presentation with a demo of a real-time rendered photorealistic foliage environment with realistic lighting. The demo included a rendering of the upcoming electric off-road vehicle from Rivian, the R1T. In addition to the gorgeous lighting and geometry, the realistic physics as the car drives over rocks and water are incredible. The new materials framework in Unreal Engine 5.2 features realistic refraction, as we can see in these open based body panels on the Rivian model. Another exciting addition to UE 5.2 for developers is a new procedural terrain generation framework. It's mind-blowing how the terrain accommodates changes and adapts to the surrounding objects in such a seamless way. This will likely speed up development of open world games massively. Developers can handcraft small areas and then procedurally generate the remaining game world. As far as hardware is concerned, the demo was run with a 3900K CPU along with an RTX 4090 GPU. So today's current top-of-the-line tech can run this incredible demo in real time with what looks like decent frame rates. It will be interesting to see how this all scales to lower tier hardware. At the State of Unreal presentation, we also got a more in-depth look at a game I already covered in the past, and that's Project M from NCSoft, built on on Unreal Engine 5, the game features realistic character models, facial animations and lighting. The environments look super detailed, probably thanks to Nanite and Lumen, and the company says the game leverages AI to generate the facial animations with a technology called voice-to-face. The game certainly looks impressive, and it will be interesting to see how AI adds to animations and models going forward. This is an early example of that. Speaking of character animations, one of the coolest updates in Unreal Engine 5.2 is the new MetaHuman Animator. It can use a mobile phone or a stereo camera rig. Epic showed the Senua Games actress doing a live performance on stage captured by an iPhone, and the MetaHuman Animator software converted that into a 3D animation in less than a minute locally, so that's on the local machine that the demo team was using, not using cloud rendering. The result is a realistic 3D model that reprises what the actress just recorded recorded on her phone. This is nothing new, but at this level of detail and ease of integration into the Unreal Engine, it's a game changer for developers. Just about anyone making games can create a realistic 3D model and animate it using just a phone. And note that the rig is completely editable, so you can use that model to generate new animations. Epic even showed the same captured animation transposed onto other models. There was a tease on what Epic will be adding next to Unreal Engine 5. 
2005, and one of the things that caught my eye was path tracing integration. Nvidia also talked real-time path tracing coming to Cyberpunk 2077 next update. Can it really be that path tracing is coming to games soon? Well, I did find an interesting all path trace engine currently being developed by Vladimir Komarov from Wargaming Studio. One of the most impressive things about how realistic graphics look using path tracing is in the way light is rendered. You can see in this Jelly Dragon how incredible the subsurface scattering looks. In this other demo from the engine's author, you can see that one of the challenges for real-time path tracing rendering is the denoising process. I could see next-gen GPUs featuring dedicated denoising fixed function hardware to help with this. I spoke with Vladimir about the challenges of running real-time path tracing and he's confident that Nvidia is moving in the right direction with the investment in technology like real-time ray tracing and AI, particularly with micromeshes and neural radiance cache. Micromesh was introduced with the RTX 40 series as a hardware accelerated way of displacing micromeshes, so basically to allow highly detailed and complex geometries to be rendered easily and ray traced more efficiently. It's not quite the same as meshlets, which I've covered in the past, where meshes are processed in workgroups for better data sharing. Neural radiance caching is another technology introduced by Nvidia that uses AI to train the radiance caching while the scene is being rendered. So the training starts when the scene is run and is then retrained every few frames. This all happens in real time, so that the path tracing doesn't have to fully run constantly if that makes sense. If you think of sparsity in neural networks or reducing precision in computation while maintaining a good level of accuracy, this technique is kind of a similar trick to improve performance. I covered an alternative solution from Octane in the past that uses meshlets and there's of course Nanite from Epic. All these tricks are unavoidable as it's near impossible to run full path tracing even in offline rendering. Even the movie industry doesn't fully render path tracing. They have to use tricks with lighting to reduce render times. Speaking with Vladimir about his path tracing engine, he seems confident that we're close to having everything needed for real-time path tracing, if tricks like the ones mentioned are used, of course. I asked him what he would like to see in the 5000 series from Nvidia and the DXR standard, and support for curve primitives would be a start, as well as multi-level instancing of BVH and micro-geometry. And of course, for AMD and Intel to catch up to Nvidia in terms of acceleration. At the end of the day, the most important thing will be just more grunt processing power to meet the computation demands. I think there are already plenty of great tools to achieve ultra-realistic graphics, which developers haven't even begun to fully explore. One thing's for sure, the results are absolutely stunning, and it seems we're not that far off of photorealism. Path tracing is of course only one piece of the pie, and in the future I will cover other emerging technologies for graphics. Now, regardless of how incredible the rendering technologies are becoming, you still need artists to create the source material, right? Well, not quite. Digital artist Alona One has turned AI-generated images into 3D scenes using Nerf, with the ability to refine them in real time in a non-destructive workflow. While far from perfect, this is the beginning of a whole new way of creating graphics. You can simply prompt an AI to generate artwork in the style that you want and turn that into a 3D scene. For smaller game studios, this could help with generating assets with minimal resources. But what if the model generated doesn't quite have the texture you had envisioned? Well, a new method called text to tax generates textures for 3D objects based on text prompts. This also has interesting applications in the world of modding. Some of the most popular mods for Skyrim, for instance, are high-resolution texture packs. A method like this could help with generating textures for both existing models, but also for new objects created by the modding community. One interesting trend that goes beyond gaming applications is the notion of digital influencers. Korean game publisher Crafton created such a character named Anna, and it's interesting how it's blending hyper-realistic 3D animation with live video. The idea is that this digital influencer will have its own pop music, fashion, Instagram account, that that sort of thing. I'm not sure what to make of that, but it's an interesting application of 3D graphics nonetheless. I could see one of these digital influencers even having its AI-generated content like selfies
movies and stuff like that with minimal human curating. I also like following what artists at some of the studios out there are making, as these are good indicators of what we can expect in upcoming games. Pasquale Cionti from game studio Torn Banner, who makes their chivalry games, just posted a 3D environment using Quixel Magascans, a technology that I've covered several times and that is now owned by Epic. Here we see Lumen and Nanite used to great effect with some incredible looking terrain rendered in real time. A really interesting use case for Unreal Engine that blends games and film is this virtual production from Epic's own Cordell Felix, a content artist at the company. So this scene features two live actors performing in Epic's virtual production environment. So the whole saloon was created in Unreal Engine. You can spot a few artifacts here and there, but what is cool about this technique is that the real-time environment can be changed at runtime, so props can be moved, lighting can be changed, etc. And the last game I want to feature is the recently announced Jew Moon Will on the Blade. This upcoming Unreal Engine 5 game is testament to what I said in my last video. Creating video games has never been as attainable as it is now. This incredible looking game is being developed by a single person. You'll have to excuse the Twitter video quality. The game features really cool particle effects and lighting. I think we will see more and more games developed by very small teams that will hold up to the quality of AAA titles from big studios, leveraging asset stores, procedural content from Unreal Engine and AI. We might be on the verge of a renaissance for video games with all these tools that are democratizing video games creation. I will continue covering the technological advancements in graphics in the coming months, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my content. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. By supporting my channel on Patreon, you will gain access to the Cortex Discord server, where you can talk to me directly and join a welcoming community of tech enthusiasts. If you can't contribute at this time, then give this video a like and share it, as that really helps. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.